I eat beans on toast and I enjoy it. Hey guys, welcome back to the Girl Gone London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm an American expat who's lived in the UK for almost 10 years. And today I am talking about the British habits or customs that I have definitely picked up during my time here. Okay, so if you're new here, make sure to hit subscribe. It really helps other people see my videos. It helps me out. And I am hardcore struggling at the moment, literally still in my pajamas. And we've way, way past the point where it is acceptable to be in your pajamas in the afternoon. But I work from home now and still a lot of things aren't open here. Some things are and that's good, but it's been quite rainy today. So I'm inside in my pajamas needing your subscribes. Okay, so I've made a list of seven British habits or customs that I feel like I definitely have adopted during my time here. I'm also gonna make a video about the American things that I feel like I still do even after living in the UK for 10 years. But today is all about how all of you lovely people have corrupted me to live the British way. Okay, so the first thing I wrote down is a funny one and it relates to not telling the waiter or waitress that anything is wrong with my meal. So this is something that I've noticed in the States, we are just a bit more open about if the waiter comes by and says, oh, is everything okay? That would actually be your cue to tell him or her what is not okay, not in like a rude way, that is not okay. But in a, oh, actually, um, you know, you may have, you forgot the this or, it's like cooked a way that I'm not happy with. Maybe it feels like overcooked or undercooked. Again, I'm not advocating being rude in a restaurant, but I feel like when people are more open about something that's wrong with their meal, whereas here, I feel like they could deliver, deliver the completely wrong meal and they would come by and say, oh, is everything okay? And you're just like, yes, oh, never better. It's been great. I definitely do this now. We were at a restaurant the other day doing outdoor dining, which was really exciting. And I had ordered something and it definitely was like, I wasn't happy with it. Um, it just like was not what I expected. And they came over and they said, how's everything going? And we were just like, oh, the food is amazing. Thank you so much. Just out of this, it's too awkward to say that anything's wrong or you know, to give any feedback or anything. You just say, yes, this is great. We're fine. It's all fine. So I have definitely adopted that now when out and about, trust me, I'm not the American making a fuss or doing anything like that. So the next British habit that I've adopted is talking about the weather or other small talk. And this is definitely true of the British. I, if there's a really good book called Watching the English, which is um, actually an English sociologist and she observed herself and other English people. And she noticed that it is really true that uh, English people, British people love to talk about the weather. And people always say like, well, surely they talk about the weather in America or in other countries. And I mean, it's, it's not that we don't, it's not that I've never had a conversation about the weather before, but the weather here is so consistently unpredictable that it's just something that's so easy to talk about, especially because the culture here is to not dive into anything personal. So that's where the weather really comes in to save the day. I have definitely adopted this. I know better than to bombard someone with my American questions and want to know everything about their personal life within, you know, 20 minutes of meeting them. I know to talk about the weather and definitely that has become second nature to me. So you have someone come in for a meeting or you meet someone, I don't know, in line somewhere, you're waiting for a long time and you're talking and you, you stick to the surface stuff. You stick to the weather, if it's raining, if it's too hot, there's always something that you can say and you can always pick either side as well. That's the benefit of British weather because when it's rainy and cold, then you get to talk about how it's been rainy and cold for so long and you just wish that it were sunny. And when it's sunny and hot, you get to talk about how it's too hot and how, you know, it's prob probably going to rain tomorrow or something. So the weather is so constantly changing. You can always bring it up in conversation and I definitely do this. Okay, so the next thing I wrote down was saying British words and phrases. Now there are certain things that as an American, I feel absolutely foolish saying here and I'm never going to adopt in my everyday vocabulary because 
it's not me and it just sounds absurd. There are smaller things like the word cheers for thank you. I'm like, I don't think I've ever said that in my 10 years here because I just think I sound ridiculous. And you know, I admire anybody who wants to assimilate in that way and start saying all of these British phrases, but kind of, I just think we sound stupid a lot of the time. So the words I'm talking about are more like everyday words as opposed to greetings or things like that. So for instance, I find it really hard to refer to the American trash can as anything but the bin now. This also has to do with um, living with a British, some man just walked outside the window and was, I think, laughing at me. Um, this also has to do with living with a British husband because the words that he uses are things like bin and pram and things like that. So maybe if I lived here with another American, that would be slightly different, but I definitely say bin. I don't say rubbish as much. I think I still say trash, um, but you know, and words for food as well. So I will say courgette instead of zucchini and aubergine instead of eggplant. And that's just kind of out of necessity because when I'm going shopping, I need to know those words. And I so I think of things in those words. And there are probably plenty of others I can think of. So while my accent hasn't changed, I definitely use British words very naturally without thinking of them to refer to objects around the house. Okay, the next British thing that I do is I eat beans on toast and I enjoy it. So we do not do this in the States and also baked beans in America typically have like a barbecue flavoring. And so when you say to an American that you're eating beans on toast, it just sounds disgusting and absurd. The beans here don't have that barbecue flavor. Um, so it tastes different than what I would picture as an American anyway but I definitely have gotten on board with it. It does taste good and I definitely will always be down for some beans on toast or egg and beans on toast. And that is one of the British kind of like fast, quick meals in the kitchen that I have become a fan of. The next thing I wrote on my list was I take off my shoes before I go into the house. And this is different in different cultures. And I'm not saying that in the States people don't do this. I am saying in Florida, I feel like a lot of the time we didn't do this. We just wore our shoes in the house. And I, I've been trying to think back like to my childhood and going over to friends' homes. And I definitely think it was way more common to keep your shoes on walking in the house than it is here. It is definitely hardly ever acceptable for a lot of people to wear your outdoor shoes in your home. It is really popular here to have slippers. You know, it's a colder climate, especially than I'm used to. And so I, of course, I do not wear my shoes in the house here. And I, I always know to take off my shoes before I go into someone else's house. But when I go to the States and visit my family, I keep my shoes on in the house in a lot of their home in a lot of their homes and that's what they do as well. So I'm not quite sure the meaning behind this difference or um, you know, we often have tile and hardwood in Florida because of the heat. So I'd be interested in hearing from people from other countries. What do you think shoes on or shoes off in the house? Comment below. Definitely in um, in the southeast of England you take off your shoes for the most part before you go in the house. So I definitely do that now. Another British thing that I do is I have adopted to British tipping culture, which is to say that there isn't really one. So in America, and I'll do a whole video on this, but in America, it is extremely uh, common and uh, required is the wrong word, but basically required, expected, strongly expected to tip heavily after meals in restaurants. And there's loads of other instances where you would tip. Um, here, not so much. So you do not have to leave anything for a tip. It is not required. It is not necessarily expected. If people do tip here, it's going to be closer to 10%. Whereas in America, that would be kind of like a slight and you would tip 20% but I have very gratefully adopted to the lack of British tipping culture, save myself some money. And I definitely am not the American who goes around tipping 20% as much as waiters and waitresses I'm sure really appreciate when American visitors come over and tip like Americans and the culture that we're used to. So in that sense, I, 
I definitely have to force myself to think about tipping when I'm in the US um, because it's become more common for me now to not tip or to not tip to the extent that I would have done before. And the last British uh, custom or way of doing things that I have definitely converted to is the 24 hour clock. So in the States, we call that military time and you definitely have no clue what any of it means unless you are familiar with the military or in the military. I mean, you could probably make an educated guess, but it's not well used. We would say a like not just verbally, but our clocks and our phones and everything would say 8 a.m., 8 p.m., um, and we don't have really widespread use of the 24-hour clock. Here I find that it's much more common, so I was checking my different devices and both my laptop and my tablet, which were purchased in the UK, were automatically set to 24-hour time. And so of course that means when it says like 20, that means eight and 21 is, um, you know, 9 p.m. and things like that. So that is something that in the beginning I struggled with because I felt like I always had to take away 12 from whatever number, you know, past 12. So if it was like 14, I would have to actually kind of do a quick mental math to take away 12 to figure out what time in the afternoon it was. I don't have to think about it anymore. I've definitely fully converted. I can look at something that says, um, you know, 22 o'clock. Do you say 22 o'clock? I mean, no one says 22 o'clock, but I don't know how else to verbally describe it. But if something says like 22, I know that that means 10 p.m. and I don't have to think about it. But that is another difference between the UK and the US that a lot of people don't know until they move here. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. And again, stick around because I will be coming out with a video of American things I still do in the UK uh, on purpose and not, things that I haven't quite adjusted to. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you guys next time.